Hello everyone. So we meet again with another interesting topic, which is all about crude oil and its market dynamics. Already you know that we had discussed in detail about US dollar, how it dominates in the world market, how the value of the currency is decided, what is uh, petro dollar, all these things in our earlier sessions, 92, 93, and 94. Hope you have already watched that video. Now, today in this session, what we are going to decode is what is crude oil and how is it impacting especially our stock market and other markets also. And in this, we will be decoding in depth about uh, what are the different types of crude oils and how the crude oil is produced, what are the uh, different grades of crude oil available, what are the products. Uh, which is formed from uh, distillation of the crude oil or while crude oil production or refining and what how the byproducts are utilized in, in various uh, utilities so things like that also we will be going through what is the crude oil spot and future markets how it is traded in the market and uh, people make money out of that or the institutions make money out of that and also uh, we will be touching upon uh, what is opec what is opec plus which are the countries involved in that, how the crude oil pricing is uh, decided, why the pricing is different from country to country, and how this crude oil import, uh, especially for countries like India, is impacting the economy or the economic growth, and how is it, uh, how it is slowing down, and uh, what are the alternatives available to crude oil, wherein we can reduce our dependence on crude oil, and also help the economy progress going forward. So, what is crude oil? So crude oil simply is a mixture of hydrocarbons formed from plant and animal remains that lived in a marine environment millions of years ago. So a pictorial representation of the same is uh, shown here on the screen. Over the course of these millions of years, the remains were covered by layers of rock, sand and silt. A combination of pressure and heat from the layers turned those remains into crude oil. So that's how the crude oil is formed with an hydrocarbon mix mixture over a period of time huge years are required to convert that uh, fossil remains into the precious crude oil. Because it dates back millions of years, crude oil is also known as fossil fuel. So, pictorial representation, so this is a crude oil extraction here and this is the various strata inside the earth uh, surface and the picture is self explanatory So, a bigger or zoomed picture is shown here. So, uh, the organisms turn into oil and natural gas. So, I will not sp spend much time on the technicalities of crude oil. So, types of crude oil. So, oil investors are generally concerned with the quality of the oil they are investing in and the location it comes from. This is because crude oil forms differently due to geographical makeup of the location. Oil prices are based on geopolitics, natural events, and organizational influences which in turn dictate production supply and demand. So the crude oil industry and the regulators use crude oil's density and sulfur content in the same to classify into several categories. So oil can be grouped by sulfur content as either sweet or sour or by density as either heavy like if the density is high then heavy and if the density it's lighter density then light. So, uh, using these two groups and by creating a group in between, oil is classified into six classes by the industry and investors. So, that's what you can see on the screen. So, it's heavy sweet crude oil, heavy sour crude oil. So, these are like used the, so in the previous slide, what is heavy and sweet is already mentioned. So, used to make industrial products like asphalt and plastics. So, this kind of oil. Now, if you see medium sweet crude oil and medium sour crude oil, they have a sulfur content that falls somewhere between heavy and light. So, that is why medium. And light or sweet crude oil and light sour crude oil are generally used in diesel, gasoline and aviation fuel like in our aeroplane and all because they take less processing. So, uh, less processing in the sense if crude oil, uh, already you know that crude oil as the name indicates, it's not pure; it's crude, so it has to be refined, which we'll be uh, discussing in detail in the next slides. So 
that crude oil process if it is cheaper then it will reduce the cost of production so that will uh, help uh, to reduce the crude oil but also another thing in that is that if it if the crude oil refining is easier then the crude oil barrel rate also increases because uh, it has lesser uh, efforts to refine don't worry we will discuss everything in detail in the coming slides so sour crude has more sulfur and sweet crude has lesser sulfur so uh, sour crude has uh, more sulfur and carbon than light crude and requires more refining thus it incurs more cost so if the sulfur content is high it is difficult to refine so sulfur content greater than 0.5 are categorized under high sulfur content and sweet crude is easy to process good quality and highest like like i told it's having higher cost per barrel now types of crude oil uh, you can see uh, based on density and sulfur content uh, various crude oil is selected so various uh, locations so kuwait Saudi Arabia, Mexico, United States, Dubai, uh, Saudi Arabia, uh, Iran, Ecuador, North Sea. So you can see going up is sour, going down is sweet, going left is heavy, and going right is light. So these are the various geographies uh, wherein you can find the various types of crudes which we have defined in the last slide, like six uh, types of uh, crudes are there which is available. So this for you to understand the various. Uh, uh, locations of this crude uh, oil availability now getting directly into crude oil value chain so first is oil sourcing so, so where all you will get the sourcing uh, it can be an onshore field which is like the field on the oil exploration field on the ground uh, i mean that is not offshore not in the sea or water body it's in the land then it is a offshore field so which is inside the uh, ocean or sea so that's called a offshore rig or offshore field then uh, another thing is imports like in india uh, we have oil fields also offshore and on uh, onshore and also we are major importer of crude oil so we don't have a field for extraction so what we do we import crude oil and then refine it so after oil sourcing what you do as i told we refine it so imports whatever we import it can be stored also the crude oil will be stored and then it will be refined then comes in the value chain transmission so once the refining is done then yes you have to transport that to various places of conception so that can be done through pipelines trucks or railways and after transmission is distribution so obviously it has to be distributed to various places so retail outlets like the petrol pumps or places like that then the airports for uh, aviation turbine fuel so it's for uh, filling the fuel in the various flights like in indigo or something then you have lpg dealers so you have uh, natural gas also as a byproduct from the refining so that is used for uh, uh, lpg dealers like bharat gas or uh, sp whatever and then oil depots and terminals so again that's uh, another part of distribution and then to various industries like crude oil is uh, a uh, raw material for various uh, industries manali petrochemicals uh, into poly oil manufacturing then you have uh, shalimar paints or asian paints who has got paint as a uh, product which is having crude oil as the raw material so etc even gale you have got uh, gale has got uh, gas natural gas uh, or lng supply so they will take uh, gas from them now uh, coming to total annual energy consumption in india so it's as per 2021 if you see it's majorly it's 51 percent is on coal the energy is been met through coal then uh, you have natural gas only eight percent petroleum and other liquids like you can uh, tell that it's crude oil derived is 30 percent and nuclear is hardly two percent and renewables is just nine percent in 2021 so distribution of india's primary energy consumption so if you see coal is 56 percent as we told in the previous slide and uh, if you compare that with the world so world's primary energy consumption by fuel if you see coal is just 27 percent so that shows that india is uh, reliant more on uh, coal for the energy coal fired boilers and all so india is still more dependent on coal and if you see natural gas is 25 percent and india natural gas is just six percent so uh, going forward the natural gas can increase so it has got another potential stock which is gale 
which I told that I have been holding uh, as a disclosure. And also, if you see, hydro electric it is 6.8, so hydro electric in India it is 4.3, almost uh, similar. Nuclear energy is 4.3, but in India it is just 1.1 percent. And renewables, if you see in India, it's 5 percent, and uh, worldwide, if you see, uh, it is 6.7 percent. So, uh, oil uh, is 31 percent, and oil is 26 percent. But if you see uh, the natural gas is where you can see a difference in both the uh, places. Uh, so, uh, natural gas as you know is uh, lesser polluting than uh, fossil fuel based coal. So, that is something which we have to look into going forward. So, uh, here you see world is dependent less than half the usage of India as far as coal is concerned. Now, uh, again natural gas as we told the difference you can see both of them. Now, the crude oil components. So, crude oil components mainly include LPG, then ATF, aviation turbine fuel, naphtha, motor spirit, what is called, what we call as petrol, then kerosene, superior kerosene oil is what it is called, SKO, then uh, HSD, which is uh, high speed diesel. So, what we use in our uh, car as diesel in diesel uh, engines, then LDO, light, light diesel oil, lube oil, then uh, fuel oil. So, it can be furnace oil or LSHS. Then bitumen, which we use in our tar or for tarring or other purposes. Pet coke in used for various energy uh, producing activities, which is again a byproduct of uh, crude oil refining. Then waxes for various uh, grease and other things. Now let's discuss about usage and consumption trend of petroleum products. So if you see, the first comes diesel, then comes motor spirit, which is petrol, then comes the LPG which is used as cooking gas or other applications, even in industrial applications. Then comes pet coke. Then comes, fifth comes naphtha. Sixth comes, uh, sixth comes the, uh, uh, sixth comes the uh, bitumen, which is used for tarring activities. So, that's how it is, the volume of consumption. So, first comes diesel and the uh, fifth comes, uh, or the sixth comes the bitumen. Now, fractional distillation. Now, see if you can see the crude oil is stored in the storage tank, then it is heated and uh, it is heated to various temperature grades. So, you can see the temperature grades here starting from uh, 350 uh, to 25 degree. So, you can see from the bottom you get bitumen, then lubricating oil, fuel oil, diesel, paraffin, naphtha, gasoline, petroleum gas. So, various uh, applications, gasoline in car, then uh, petroleum gas for uh, cooking gas, bitumen for tarring, then uh, lubricating oil, waxes, greases, then fuel oil for say, shipping other uh, things, diesel for various vehicles, paraffin or this uh, for aviation turbine fuel, so uh, naphtha. So that's how it is. And uh, if you see top crude oil consumers worldwide, so US, so this is of 2022. So United States is having the largest uh, or the biggest appetite for oil. Uh, they are the largest producer also. If you see United States is the largest producer and consumer of the oil. Then China, then comes uh, India. So, this, are, this is not the production, uh, do not uh, interpret this as uh, production, this is actually consumption. So, highest consumption is by USA, then China, then India, then Saudi Arabia, Russia, Japan, South Korea, Brazil. So, that is the, uh, uh, this is like 19140 into thousand barrels per day crude oil uh, benchmarks so crude oil benchmarks uh, there are various benchmarks so you can see wti is there then uh, brent crude is there dubai uh, oil is there so th these are the various uh, the major uh, crude oil benchmarks so crude oil benchmarks means the uh, rate or the dollar rate per barrel is fixed for these types of crudes and this is taken as a standard and if you see if you say in world market the crude oil price means it's the rate per barrel so that's how the representation is in the world market it is not spoken in like what is the liter rate for petrol it's spoken in terms of crude oil price per barrel so it can be a brand uh, crude oil or it's it can be a uh, wti crude oil so worldwide brand is what is normally utilized uh, as a major benchmark so if you see wti is west texas intermediate and brent crude is uh, on the right hand side so these are the major two uh, benchmarks 
for uh, oil pricing. So, what is Brent crude? So, it's uh, fo found in located at UK or Norway in the North Sea. In the geography, you can see on the background. So, it is actually sea drill crude oil, like it is offshore uh, drilling, slightly higher sulfur content, so 0.37. So, it's better. Uh, it's still lesser because we told that uh, higher sulfur content more than 5.5 percent is considered as higher sulfur content. So better for uh, diesel production, cheaper transport due to easier sea transport as it's near sea. So actually transportation from sea is very easy through pipelines. It can be done if it is in onshore. Then uh, transportation through road and other things are very difficult because uh, you can say houses, buildings, or various uh, uh, structures in the land. So transporting the same, uh, bypassing all these things is very difficult. So only way, major way is through tankers and all, which is uh, more costlier. Unlike a uh, pumping system through uh, piping system uh, from the uh, sea. Now the two thirds of the world's crude oil contracts are in Brent crude. So if you see, majority of the world's crude oil contracts are dealt in Brent crude. Now talking about West Texas Intermediate or WTI crude oil. So this is uh, kind of US crude oil located at North American area. Land drilled crude oil, unlike uh, the Brent crude oil, it is onshore uh, platform rigging. So it is uh, not a water body uh, drilled crude oil, unlike uh, Brent crude oil. So lower sulfur content than Brent crude oil. So it's a sour, uh, it's not sour, it's a sweet uh, crude. So costlier transport because uh, it is not uh, in the sea, it's in the land. So as we told in the earlier slides, uh, how it is costlier to transport uh, if it is land drilling. So uh, and also due to concentrated storage locations in USA. So it's deep in the land. Uh, they have got uh, concentrated uh, uh, storage of this uh, uh, crude oil. So because of this, uh, it is very is very difficult or costlier to transport it all the way to different portions of USA and even uh, abroad. So that's why it is costlier. Now another one is uh, UAE Dubai crude oil, uh, also called Fateh. So this is not that important because it's not uh, uh, that relevant. Internationally, the crude oil is medium sour crude oil that is extracted from Dubai. It is used as a price benchmark or oil market, especially in Asian countries, because it is one one of only a few Persian Gulf crude oil available immediately. Crude oil, Dubai crude oil, is light and sour, and uh, its sulfur content is two percent, making it six times more sour than Brent crude and eight times more sour than West Texas Intermediate. So it's uh, difficult to uh, refine because of the higher sulfur content. Another one is Russian crude oil benchmark Urals, Urals oil. Why I am talking about Russian crude oil is recently we have understood or we see that there is a lot of imports uh, from Russian oil by India um, replacing US uh, imports. So because of this uh, Russian oil uh, and various other countries also importing uh, Russian oil because they are given at a discount, discount as high as 30%. So that's why I am discussing about crude, uh, Urals as well. So Ural oil is the benchmark for crude Russian oil exports. It's a mix of heavy sour oil from Urals and the Volga region and light oil from Western Siberia. Urals is the most common export grade of crude oil from Russia. Ural oil is the benchmark of Russian oil traded from its western port on the Baltic. The G7, the European Union and Australia imposed a $60 per barrel price cap as a part of sanction on the sea bond exports of Russian crude oil in December 2022 during Russia-Ukraine war. So this is like a price cap uh, as a part of sanction to uh, uh, reduce the income or uh, income for Russia because this is uh, end of the day utilized uh, for uh, fueling the war. So as a part of sanctioning the this thing was done but uh, what Russia has done already you know that they have been giving it at a discount to various countries including India. So other crude oil benchmarks include OPEC reference basket, Canadian crude and North Sea Brent crude, etc. So, which is of not much importance, uh, so I am skipping that. Now, uh, talking about production of uh, petroleum products by type in India 2021 2022. So, if you see uh, total production is around 255 metric ton. So, LPG is 5%, uh, petrol uh, or motor gasoline is 16%, naphtha 8%, aviation turbine fuel is 4%, and high speed uh, diesel oil is 42%, which is diesel. And uh, other percentages, uh, minor percentages, you can see here in the chart. So crude oil refines refineries in India, state-wise, you can see uh, various uh, companies. Also, you can see on this side. So Indian Oil Corporation, Hindustan Petroleum, uh, BPCL, Chennai Petroleum, 
uh, oil and uh, ONGC, Bangalore uh, Refinery, then HPCL, uh, Mittal Energy, Reliance Industries, Nayara Energy, uh, Numailigra uh, Refinery Limited. So these are the various uh, uh, companies in India who are uh, the major refiners and you can see various locations mentioned here and the state and also what is the tonnage 255 uh, metric tons uh, of uh, crude oil which has been refined uh, in India rest all is completely imported the crude oil refineries in India again it is uh, various sites uh, various plants of various companies is uh, consolidated here and you can see how it is summed up to 253 uh, million metric tons per annum so refining capacity of crude oil in India, you can see from 2012 how it has increased and kind of flattened in uh, the previous years till now. Oil sourcing, so oil sourcing various uh, years it is mentioned and if you see oil import, so 75 to uh, 80 percent or even 85, I can say up to 90 percent is mainly imported since years uh, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. Every year you can see that uh, oil production is only a tip of iceberg and rest is completely imported so you can see india is a major importer of crude oil for our energy needs and crude oil import share in uh, financial year 2021 2022 you can see uh, we were having only two percent russian oil and majorly it was from iraq saudi arabia united emirates which is uae and usa you can see 11 percent now if you come to the other slide russia has become 19 percent from just two percent in 2022 and uh, if you see the share of USA is just 6%, which was earlier 11%. So that's why I told that the uh, because of the discounts given by Russia, we have increased the oil sourcing from Russia uh, and reduced the oil sourcing from USA. USA is having their own problems uh, regarding that because they are losing their share in the market share. So they are uh, putting in various sanctions and playing politics to take care of those things. Now, Iran not much change majorly, majorly if you see the US as I told and Russia if you see the increase year on year you can see. Yeah, so that's how it has panned out. Green means uh, it has increased and other has decreased. Now top three uh, crude oil producers worldwide if you see USA, Russia and Saudi Arabia. These are the three top uh, oil producers in the world volume wise. So uh, largest crude oil consumer as well. As I told in the earlier side in the chart that USA consumes and produces uh, crude oil the highest now talking about organization of petroleum exporting countries OPEC OPEC so OPEC is one of the uh, important thing uh, which is to be uh, considered as far as the crude oil business is concerned basically if you see OPEC manipulates the oil production thus controlling the oil price now global oil market is controlled uh, by Saudi Arabia. Earlier it was uh, till 1960s, if you see it was dominated by seven sisters, including Dutch Shell, British Petroleum, BP uh, and uh, the US Chevron. These seven sisters allied themselves to control the market uh, as they wish because they were the main oil uh, refiners and uh, they could make good money out of it. They took cheap oil from Venezuela, countries like Venezuela and uh, Saudi Arabia and sold it at uh, much expensively in US, which is a developed country. Just before getting into that, if you see one barrel, uh, whatever you see, you know, one barrel of crude oil. So one barrel of crude oil is like 159 liters of crude oil. So that's a fact check. Now, uh, oil producers were so unhappy. So Venezuela, Saudi Arabia, Iran, Iraq and Kuwait. So in uh, 1960, uh, these five countries formed something called OPEC. So on the screen, you can see the five countries. So then later, eight more joined later to form the 13 countries. So the 13 countries you can see on the screen, including uh, Qatar and uh, UAE. So uh, that's how the OPEC wa was formed. There is something called OPEC plus. So on the screen, you can see what are the 13 uh, uh, countries. Uh, which is part of OPEC. Now, if you see OPEC plus, so OPEC plus what happens later after OPEC, countries like Russia and UK found more oil. So they started setting their own oil price. So if you see more than 15 nations flooded world with surplus oil supply. So that's like $40 per barrel 20 years back when US, Europe, China were growing, they needed lots of oil. 
So what happened? They uh, hiked the prices of oil because the demand was high for countries like growing countries at that time, 20 years back for US, Europe and China, fast growing countries. And uh, thus, uh, hiked the oil price and uh, transportation cost increase, whether it is road, sea or air. And from 2003, prices started jumping up to shooting to very high levels. So now talking about uh, OPEC plus, so these are the countries which joined later to from the uh, OPEC plus countries. So because they were also having good uh, oil production capabilities, so then they formed the uh, total uh, group. So you can see 28.7 million barrels per day and for OPEC plus if you see 16.5 million barrels per day. Though they are not as high as OPEC members, still they have good production capacity. So this is as of April 2023 uh, data. So if you see the crude oil price increases, then the food cost, then the uh, fruits, vegetables, everything increases. So India is the first largest consumer of oil in the world, the largest consumer. So US makes oil, but uses more than they produce. So that is one uh, fun fact about US. So this is the country. So in the OPEC plus, uh, Azerbaijan is one country. So just for you to understand, there is a country like Azerbaijan. Uh, we are drilling down the production cost here. So, what are the uh, factors uh, which are impacting the production cost? Now, uh, uh, before talking about crude oil uh, uh, pricing or the production cost, uh, another thing which is to be noted is that higher crude oil prices leads to higher inflation, which I told, which I already told, and higher interest rate. So, higher inflation means they will increase the interest rate to bring down the inflation. So, higher interest rate means uh, lower borrowing. So, lower borrowing means then lower capital expenditure then lower renewables so a higher oil price somebody is telling that uh, if the price is increased then somebody will stop using crude oil and they will shift to renewables but uh, this is uh, actually uh, how it happens like if the higher oil price is increased then the borrowing is uh, reduced and the uh, capex plans for the renewables is uh, also reduced because uh, renewables are costly fs as of now it has got a lot of capital spending unlike uh, crude oil refining so uh, then in that case higher crude oil will not actually uh, reduce the oil production but in, in, uh, in fact increase the oil production or oil demand and reduce the renewables so this is one uh, funda so intention is to reduce dependent on crude oil and accelerate green renewable is uh, various uh, politicians telling but this is not the fact now if you see uh, mohammed bin salman in 1985 born in 1985 having a bachelor degree in law in 2007 he is the member of Saudi royal family. So after death of Saudi King Abdullah, Salman uh, became Salman bin uh, Abdulaziz became the king. And Muhammad bin Salman is the crowned prince and son of Salman and prime minister of Salman bin Aziz. So this is the person who has uh, brought in a lot of reforms in the uh, Saudi oil production. So if you see the production cost of Saudi, it's as low as 10 to 15 dollar per barrel so iran and iraq also has slightly higher but nearly uh, but nearly the cost of production uh, is almost nearly as per uh, same as that of uh, saudi so uh, if you see uh, us shale us shale uh, which is again uh, us shale is something which is available in usa and uh, they are producing the uh, oil from us shale so the cost of production for us shale is as high as 25 to 30 dollar per barrel so nowhere nowhere comparable to 10 to 15 dollar dollar per barrel as far as saudi is concerned and if you see uh, venezuela nigeria brazil those the production cost is as high as 30 to 38 dollar uk is having the highest production cost which is 45 to 50 dollar russia is again slightly lesser 20 to 25 dollar lesser than usa but still uh, costlier than uh, saudi so uh, what are the various uh, uh, Things which are affecting the crude oil price. The major cost drill down for the uh, crude oil is capital spending, production cost, administrative and transportation cost, and gross tax. So, capital uh, spending, which is nothing but the capex, is mainly higher for uh, shale oil uh, because compared to Saudi Arabia, the shale oil is basically uh, from US shale. So, there is a different uh, uh, topic as such. Wherein, what is the difference between the US shale oil and the Saudi Arabian oil drilling? So, if you are interested, you can uh, uh, comment in the comment box. I can make a separate video on how the 
uh, US shale oil is different from the uh, refining process of uh, Saudi uh, oil. So, in US oil, uh, US shale oil, you have typically first drilling, then pipe insertion, then concreting, then wall ends are blasted to make uh, cracks on the wall. Then there is a process called fracking, wherein injecting fluid at higher pressure to open up the branches in the hole. Uh, then the oil uh, <coughs> is sucked up. Then uh, horizontal drills are made with multiple uh, extraction points. Then uh, this uh, oil well can last uh, 20 to 40 years as well. It is having more years than that of typical uh, normal Saudi Arabian oil drilling facilities. But uh, the capex is very high uh, because of this uh, complicated process. And also the production cost is high uh, because of this reason of uh, uh, difference in the production. And also uh, transportation costs also and administrative costs also is high because uh, of the uh, onshore application, onshore drilling platform compared to offshore, which is easier to transport as we discussed in the earlier slide. And also uh, it is deep inside the land wherein transportation becomes costlier. Other thing is that uh, that shale oil is more expensive and difficult to extract than crude oil. It is more heavier, more viscous and contains significant amount of nitrogen and sulfur than conventional crude oil. As a result, uh, this shale oil must undergo much uh, uh, more refining process before becoming a viable energy source. So, because of that, uh, the uh, uh, production cost or the this, uh, this refining cost is very high. And uh, taxes obviously in Saudi Arabia is zero and here it is seven to eight dollar. Adding up uh, will give around thirty dollar for US shale and uh, uh, thirteen dollar for uh, Saudi Arabian oil. So currently, as I speak, it is uh, ninety-three dollar around uh, for Brent crude. So the difference is like seven to nine times. So twelve point thirteen upon nine to point four upon uh, twelve point five is around uh, nine times, and uh, uh, seven times seven to nine times. And also, if you see here, it's uh, ninety-three divided by twenty-eight is around uh, three three and a half times. So that's how the Saudi is uh, uh, having a higher end over the profitability as far as the crude oil business is concerned. Now all the figures uh, are approximate. I have done uh, deep research on this and I have got the figures somehow. So the figures can slightly vary based on time uh, duration uh, or the time in which you are hearing the video. Uh, the figures are currently taken uh, at the time of uh, making this video. And uh, already we discussed US is having uh, the highest uh, uh, producers, oil producers compared to Russia and Saudi Arabia. And uh, the barrel wise it is uh, this is how it is earlier it used to be Saudi Arabia but after uh, invention of shale oil uh, the US has gone ahead with highest uh, barrel uh, production crude oil barrels per day then third comes Russia and fourth is China so if you see the first three the difference is not much if you see the fourth one which is China having a big difference with the first three so that's what it is mentioned here now crude oil price influences supply is one thing if, if you have excess supply the, then the cost reduces just like your stocks or other commodities and if you see uh, demand also if it increases and if the much supply is not there then the price goes up then geopolitics uh, say russia ukraine war iran war uh, whatever war is there so geopolitic tensions also leads to price fluctuation in crude oil increasing the crude oil and decision of opec and other opec plus organizations it can they can easily manipulate the price uh, say they tell to increase the price because the profitability is going very low uh, then they can cut down the production and uh, if the production is cut down then the supply reduces and if the demand is there then the price increases. Then the uh, final one is spot and future market which is the all about the future market uh, trading for uh, crude oil which we will be decoding in the coming slide. So it's all about supply and demand end of the day how the crude oil price increases. Now you can see on the screen various uh, political events uh, and economic events which has impacted the crude oil price. You can pause the video and have a look at it just to have a uh, understanding of the price fluctuation and also historical crude oil uh, fluctuations your oil inflation adjusted return have varied widely by decade so it, uh, it is not consistent if you see from 1972 to 81 it is 451 percent but in 2012 to 21 it is minus 35 yeah, percent currently i speak also the crude oil price has gone below 75 dollar so that's how it is now economic uh, recoveries have typically led to rising interest rates but also more demand for energy in response oil has historically performed well. So this is how the percentage is, is uh, shown. Now again a long history of oil prices over uh, various 
events so you can pause the video and see this geopolitical impacts various wars uh, various uh, financial crises then earthquake then uh, shale oil oil supply ukraine conflict then iran oil export open up opec and non-opec reduction so all these events uh, how the crude oil have fluctuated is uh, uh, shown here so the the intention of showing is this that the fluctuations are very high as far as the crude oil is concerned so if you are doing some investments in crude oil or some trades in crude oil you have to be very uh, uh, gracious in taking it up now talking about crude oil spot and future market there was once a time when buyers would primarily purchase crude oil on the spot market like i go and buy the crude it's on the spot that is they'd pay the current price and asset delivery within a few weeks uh, but after the oil crisis of the late 1970 refiners and government buyers began looking for a way to minimize the risk of sudden price increases and the price fluctuations this is kind of hedging uh, which they were looking at so what are crude oil contracts crude oil actually bought through future contracts of crude oil which is sold and bought between the crude sellers and buyers so this is a sellers and buyers market just like your futures uh, contract for stocks or uh, indices so future contracts are utilized since the crude oil prices fluctuates as i told earlier a lot up and down in the market so if the buyers buys at a higher rate and if the crude oil prices drop the next day then it's a higher risk of capital for the buyer and vice versa to mitigate the risk the future contracts are utilized which fixes the prices of crude oil on a future fixed delivery date so that there is certainty for the traders which mitigates huge losses due to crude oil fluctuations in the market so there are traders who make profits by doing future trading just like your uh, uh, nifty uh, bank nifty trading or even uh, futures of various commodities trading so the traders future contract uh, could be bought at a higher price in market if the crude oil price is expected to go up and vice versa so basically instead of a spot buying this uh, future contracts are utilized by institutions or oil buyers for hedging their position so that uh, they mitigate this uh, big uh, fluctuation so especially during geopolitical tensions or various uh, huge economic events they uh, buy future contracts or sells future contracts based on the uh, requirements to hedge their position so that they don't end up losing money because of the fluctuations whether it is up or down in the crude oil price now getting into the main concept here which is how crude oil impacts our stock market the million dollar question so before uh, knowing that you should understand four things one is current account deficit one current account surplus then gross domestic product gdp and physical deficit so these are all uh, basic economic terms but uh, i will decode it in a very simple sense and a quicker way so that you can understand the concept of how the crude oil impacts your econo uh, economy uh, utilizing all these uh, economic terms so current account deficit or surplus calculates the difference between the money obtained and sent from the country on trade of goods and services as well as the movement of capital from domestic production abroad in the sense your uh, exports uh, the difference between the exports and the imports if the exports is more then the deficit is less or, and it is surplus and if the uh, export is less and the imports are more then we have a deficit so uh, actually surplus is good but deficit is uh, if it is a deficit then your uh, gdp is less your uh, production rate is less and your exports are less that's how it is India is always a net uh, importer uh, because their production is very less, their exporting is very less. We are more of a consumer and an importer. So current account deficit obviously is high for us is a and it is a measurement of a country's trade where the value of the goods and services it imports exceeds the value of the products it exports as I told. The current account includes net income such as interest and dividends and transfer such as foreign aid although these components make up only a small percentage of the total current account. Mainly, it is GDP which contributes to this uh, figure. India's current account deficit is uh, in 2022 to 23 was uh, 27.1 billion or 2% of GDP, and this was up from uh, 38.7 billion or 1.2% of the GDP in 2021 to 22. So, if you see the deficit has jumped uh, exponentially uh, in 2023, uh, kind of 70, 60-70% more uh, compared to 2021 and 2022 compared to the GDP. So 1.2% of GDP has become 2% of GDP. Now talking about gross domestic product. So it's like the production capability goods and services uh, given out by the country. So gross domestic, uh, domestic product GDP is a monetary measure of the market value 
of all the final goods and services produced in a specific time period by a country or a, or countries so as of 2023 june india's gdp was 3.73 trillion dollar and india's gdp growth rate uh, for 2022-2023 is 7.2% uh, 7, 7 so uh, if you see united states of america usa the gdp and gdp per capita so uh, first comes india then china japan germany and uh, yes india is at the fifth position as far as the gdp uh, is concerned and then comes uk france italy brazil canada also if you see on the right hand side the india has been leading in the gdp growth compared to all other major economies because of some uh, the shokrain war higher inflation all the countries has uh, gone up the interest rate has gone up then their uh, economy has also impacted because of which their uh, production rate has also impacted but india has been uh, stable the rbi policies the government policies all has been conducive for uh, boosting the gdp so that's why we are having uh, the highest uh, gdp growth rate of 7.2 percent and also all the financial institutions or uh, great banks uh, uh, foreign institutions are also very positive on the india's growth outlook and the third one is physical deficit so what is physical deficit it's a difference between a government's total revenue and the total expenditure revenues are in the form of tax gst etc and that's the major revenue and uh, total expenditure is uh, like they have various capex plans for operational expenditure then some boost in the economy etc so uh, spending infrastructure development etc so it is calculated by subtracting the total income from the total expenditure so physical deficit can lead to increased borrowing and accumulation of debt so uh, it's an indicator of the extent to which the government must borrow in order to finance its operation so physical deficit is expressed in absolute terms as a percentage of country's gdp the deficit was 6.4 percent of gdp in 2022-23 as against earlier estimate of 6.71 percent so deficit as uh, decrease means it's good so uh, and also if you see if the gst collection has been very good the income tax collection has also been very good so this uh, means they have got more revenue so the expenditure is high but if the revenue is more then it will adjust the deficit which we can see in the figures of 6.71 versus 6.4 so center's physical deficit widened to 25 percent 25.3 percent of the full year target between april and 2000 and june 2023 as capital expenditure surged and tax revenue remained muted so even if uh, we, are, we are seeing this but uh, they are telling that the physical deficit has widened by 25.3 percent uh, full year because uh, as we told the revenue which is like tax collection has uh, been muted and but the capital expenditure has increased the spending by the government so if you have understood the three things uh, or in fact the four things current account deficit surplus then the gdp and the fiscal deficit then let's get into the economics of crude oil price increase so first thing crude oil prices increases means more import bills in dollar so this is uh, i'm talking about india okay this is india specific so we are talking about indian stock market so it's india specific so crude oil prices increases means more import bills in dollar so more dollar outflow because we are buying uh, crude oil from uh, ma major importer of crude oil as we mentioned so even though we have in-house production we have uh, net uh, the highest uh, consumption so more import bills in dollar means uh, more dollar outflow we are giving out uh, INR and uh, buying uh, dollar so demand for dollar increase and also the dollar outflow increases so lesser exports uh, ex lesser export bills lesser dollar inflow means we are exporting less because the imports have increased a lot so dollar inflow also reduces so more import bills in dollar means uh, lesser export bills means your current account deficit increases so as we mentioned what is current account deficit the uh, higher uh, exports le leads to lesser current account deficit or uh, it may lead to current account surplus but here the imports are more so import means import more and lesser export means higher current account deficit so current account deficit increases means indian rupee depreciates the demand for dollar is higher uh, because we are dealing uh, with more dollar bills by paying in dollar uh, for crude oil so the ina uh, depreciates so the crude oil prices increases means price pass on to consumers this is one thing which they can do so if the crude oil prices increases the government can tell that the petrol cost instead of 105 rupees it has become 115 rupees 10 rupees increase so if they if the, it is passed on to consumers then uh, there is increase in inflation because the cost of uh, petrol increases uh, means the transportation cost increases then the price of your vegetables fruits everything increases so the increased inflation 
or the cost of goods and services. So increased inflation means the cost of goods and services increases. Then if the cost of goods and services increases, then interest rates has to be increased to control the inflation. So if you increase the interest rate means uh, the cost of capital for the company uh, increases. So dip in company profit margin because they have uh, uh, taken debt or maybe if the company is having big debt has uh, taken big loans and the loan uh, interest payment increases because their uh, interest rate has increased. So if the cost of capital increases and the financial cost increases, then the PAT, the profit after tax for the company reduces, means their profit margin, though the revenue is same, if the expenses has increased because of the higher interest rate, means the profit margin dips, which leads to dip in companies profit margin. So that means smaller companies lose business economics because they are small, they have taken big debts. So if the interest rate goes high, they are they lose their uh, credibility or they lose their business model. Now, another thing is that crude oil price increases. Government tries to absorb by not passing on the price to the consumers. That is another way. Instead of increasing the petrol price, they may absorb it by their own. So, what happens? Government tries to absorb by not passing on the price hike to the consumers. So, in that time, so what happens? Lower revenue or tax collection. If they don't increase the petrol price or diesel price, then the or the aviation fuel price, then the lower revenue because tax collection is less because the price has not been increased. So, and uh, that means uh, increased expenditure. So, what happens? Lower revenue and increased expenditure leads to increase in physical deficit, which we already discussed in the earlier slide. What is physical deficit? So, increase in physical deficit leads to uh, credit trading agencies downgrading the Indian economy because if the physical deficit or the debt of the physical deficit is nothing but the debt uh, taken up by the uh, uh, country. So, India takes a higher deficit means the credit rating agencies downgrades the Indian economy. So, what happens? The Indian uh, credit agencies down with the economy leads to companies availing loans from abroad is impacted by the unavailability of loan uh, or higher interest rates because uh, if the credit rating is less then uh, it's a risky thing so uh, lending to those risky countries or the companies which is in the uh, risky in the in that nation with lower uh, credit rating is uh, considered risky so they may increase the interest rate or maybe they will not give uh, bigger loans so what happens the companies availing loan from abroad is impacted by the unavailability of loan or higher higher interest rates. So this is again leading to companies unable to expand his expand his business. And if at all he is expanding, then he is getting the loan at a higher interest rate. So the profit margins are impacted. So the profitability of the company is impacted. So again, the stock prices, what happens, goes down because their profitability is uh, impacted or their expansion plan is uh, stopped because of this uh, single thing of crude, of crude oil price increase. This is the complete chain. Now, effect of crude oil price and fluctuation in stock market, which are dependent on the crude oil and its derivatives. So, Manali Petrochemical, we have discussed in detail in, in one of my earlier videos about Manali Petrochemicals. So, uh, again, uh, the raw material is crude oil, uh, crude oil is the raw material. Then, uh, Indigo, Aviation Fuel Turbine ATF. Then, Shalimar Paints, the crude oil is again for all paint companies, it's a raw material. Then, also Gale, so the natural gas. So, uh, all these things are having. Uh, uh, may impact the profitability if the crude oil prices increases because they are they may not be able to uh, pass on the increased price because if they pass on then the uh, consumption may reduce then the demand may go down so again it will impact their profitability so they will have to absorb so if the crude oil prices decreases they are uh, having good margins but if it increases it affects them worsely. Now the blame game will continue. The OPEC uh, blamed uh, US shale drillers that uh, they have not reduced the uh, production rate and if the production rate is not reduced then the price will not go up. Then uh, the crude oil prices will keep on dipping and the profit margins are impacted. So this OPEC, OPEC plus, then the US, all these people keep on fighting. Uh, so the blame games will always continue as far as the crude oil uh, price things is concerned. The energy market will definitely evolve. Now, alternate, alternatives for crude oil uh, have come up. Here are the most promising fuels and alternative uh, energy sources of the future. So, solar power, ethanol blending, so that it can reduce the crude oil usage. Now, we are using up to 10-12%. Now, uh, the new government has, the Indian government has told that it will increase to 20% in next year. And going forward, it can go as high as 30% also, which will reduce the crude oil import uh, uh, by, say, that much percentage, say 30%. Then, this will also improve our uh, physical deficit and the uh, uh, profitability of the uh, deals and again uh, improving our economy then electric vehicle also can bring down the crude oil usage because electricity is what is used coal is mainly used for that 
so again crude oil usage is reduced hydrogen fuel cells wind power other renewable sources like hydropower geothermal biodiesel nuclear energy all these things can easily um, if incorporated well in a cost effective way we can uh, reduce the crude oil dependency the thing is that renewables are costly these days uh, per megawatt generation but the, those are also coming down so ethanol is one good uh, thing which is playing around so uh, this also can reduce our dependency on crude oil which uh, can reduce our uh, import bills and then improve our uh, gdp as well now alternatives for crude oil the ethanol uh, ethanol building if you see again talking about ethanol is 99.9% uh, pure alcohol that can be blended with petrol uh, the ethanol uh, blended petrol uh, program has been significant accomplishment uh, by the uh, narendra modi government the all india average blending of ethanol with petrol has risen as i from 1.6 in 2013 to around 12% in 23 as we speak so if you see the year wise if you see the percentage uh, increase also is shown here so uh, this is actually the total uh, in crore liters of ethanol been blended so as you go to 2023 it is around 11.8% now going forward it can go as high as 20% which is projected as 559 in 2023 2024 but oil is still a powerful force so this is not going to end so soon so uh, that's the uh, real fact uh, even though people are talking about renewables this will still be there just like coal so that's all about uh, crude oil so uh, as per uh, veterans it is told that crude oil is only for next 53 years uh, by then uh, the renewable uh, energy will be completely replacing this crude oil is what it is been predicted so we will have to see going forward what is going to happen so uh, as of now the refining capacity as we told us is number one china russia india south korea is how it goes the oil production wise uh, the sequence is us saudi russia canada iraq so uh, these are all the uh, main and also oil consumption is us china india saudi so that's how the consumption path also goes so uh, considering all these things crude oil is still a major force for uh, energy uh, energy resources for uh, majority of the countries worldwide so it is going to be here uh, what we have to consider or we as stock market investors or value investors is uh, what we have to understand is that crude oil is one of the major commodity and many of the components uh, like paint uh, painting uh, stocks or the paint stock or the aviation stocks or the chemical based stocks or everything is deriving crude oil as the raw material so the fluctuation in that same or the cyclicity in that uh, same will also impact the margins or the stock prices as well so we will have to understand or closely monitor the crude oil pricing and how it impacts and uh, how our stock prices will pan out which will help predict uh, the future of our stock price and also uh, ensure that uh, we are investing at the right point to have a profitable investment So hope this session has been uh, useful for you. Uh, more interesting videos are on the way. So if you like the content, please like, share, and subscribe the video, and do share it to your uh, friends uh, and relative circle so that uh, they also come to know about the efforts we are putting in and trying to educate the uh, normal people and uplift them to a uh, higher grade of uh, understanding their own analysis and doing their own investing. So. Uh, see you in next video till then happy investing